What's going on everybody? My name is Noble and today we'll be reviewing a game called The Forest Cathedral. Now before we get started, I should thank White Thorn Games for the review codes. And those of you that know me know that I'm not really a reviewer. I'm just a guy that likes to play and promote awesome games. So with that said, let's get started. First, we're going to be talking about the story. Now, The Forest Cathedral is loosely based on the true story of Rachel Carson, who is a marine biologist who helped bring awareness to the damaging effects and harm DDT could pose to the environment, animals, and even humans. In the game, she's sent to an island where she is the sole person in charge, and her goals are to study the effects of DDT, originally designed as a pesticide to kill mosquitoes. Throughout the game, she's actually going to, to see what effects everything has uh, from mosquitoes to the wildlife, and she discovers uh, something that seems nefarious in the game. As far as the visuals and the sound go, the game probably won't be winning any awards for its looks. The 3D character models look a little bit stiff and a little out of place, although these models are only used sparingly for particular cutscenes. What did catch my attention was the puzzle platforming parts, which take place within some monitors where you control an on-screen character called the Little Man. Now these pixel platforming areas kind of remind me of a game called The Pedestrian, and that's what initially grabbed my attention for the game. As it turns out, for some gamers, me in particular, crazy 4K graphics don't always amount to a great game. Sometimes keeping things simple can be just as engaging and fun. Now, some of the other visual aspects that you will get in the game come in the form of pixelated cutscenes where characters talk to each other to help further the story. Now, the sound of the game is a mixed bag. The Forest Cathedral markets itself as an environmental thriller, and as such, you'll have those drones and long screeches throughout the game whenever things start getting a little bit weird. And there are some weird things to look out for in the game. You really have to be paying attention to what's in the background of your screen in order to catch these. You'll have something that looks like a man just out in the forest. Uh, maybe someone will seem like they're drowning even though you're the only person on the island. And at some point, uh, you kind of see your own body as just bones, which is very, very weird and unsettling. Now, unfortunately, the mixing of the music and voice and the horror theme sound effects are not often mixed the right way, sometimes sounding like the music and sound effects are just put over each other, resulting in something that doesn't always sound that great. Now, those of you who may be playing this game with headphones on, please just beware of that because it, it's going to sound bad and it may freak you out because just how loud the sounds are. Additionally, the game does have three amazing soundtracks in my opinion that you can listen to while you're in the cabin. Now unfortunately once you leave the record player the music just stops. Now I think it would have been really cool if they let you select one of the three soundtracks and just let that play as you're walking along your walking sim areas of the game. As far as the gameplay goes the Forest Cathedral is split really between walking simulator and puzzle platformer with interstitial cutscenes tying everything together. Now the walking sim is straightforward and is really actually just a small part of the game. The real gameplay, in my opinion, is set within the terminals where you control the little man and platform your way through levels to unlock gates, turn on power, and complete other tasks. And this, unfortunately, is actually where I ended up having some issues. Now I did get codes for both Steam and Xbox, and on Steam the game actually played fairly well. I do recommend, if you're going to pick this game up, pick it up on Steam did fairly well for me. I had not really any issues on the Steam port. Now, being a majority console gamer though, I did want an Xbox code and I was lucky enough to receive one, but on Xbox in particular, controls were so broken near the end that I almost gave up on the game. Now, I had already completed the game on Steam, so I knew that there was only a short section left, so I pushed on so I could complete it. Now, on Xbox, the little man was almost uncontrollable. The jumps felt delayed, causing me to die time and time again to spikes, and the combat areas felt pretty slow, causing enemies to continuously kick me back to checkpoints. Now the good thing is, Whitethorn Games prides itself on creating simple relaxing games, and as such, you do have the option to turn off the spikes completely, which did make platforming much easier. Even so, at certain points where blocks were meant to blink and then disappear, allowing you to drop to the platform below, the blocks would blink but not disappear, causing me even more frustration. Now eventually I was able to brute force my way through these areas and complete the game, 
And the good thing is the game is actually pretty short. Completing it, even with these roadblocks, only set me back about an hour or so. As for my final thoughts on the game, unfortunately I cannot recommend this game on Xbox. If you do plan on picking this game up, I highly recommend you pick it up on Steam. And I, I kind of hate to say bad things about games. I don't think anyone ever wants to make a bad video about games. And I don't think that anyone ever sets out to make a bad game at all. In all honesty, even with the issues in this game, I don't think it's actually bad. As a matter of fact, I'm really glad that I had a chance to play it. I think that this game does something that not many other games do. And that is try to teach you something. There are a few games that compel gamers to actually learn something. And before this game, I had no idea who Rachel Carson was. And the only thing that I knew about DDT was that it was a devastating move that my favorite wrestlers used to do back in the 90s. But thanks to the Forest Cathedral, I've done a little bit of research and learned something new. And now I look forward to reading Silent Spring, which is the book that Rachel published and the book that's credited with leading to the establishment of the Environmental Protection Agency. I sincerely hope that Whitethorn Games continues to make more games like this and release more games like this. Just maybe next time spend a little bit more time on your console ports. Again, I cannot recommend this on console, but if you're going to check this game out, please do so on Steam. I had a much better time on Steam. And uh, those are my final thoughts. It's not a game that is going to blow anyone away, but it is a game that I think people should experience. And at the very least, you guys should read up on who Rachel Carson was. And if you have a chance and are looking for something to read, check out Silent Spring. And I guess that's all I've got to say about the game for now. If you guys want to check out any of my other videos, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing, and I will see you next time.